God, stand strong against the evil one. Now put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. First things first, got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. I put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. First things first, you got the bell to truth. Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. Now in faith we can stand, stand, stand Against every evil plan, plan, plan Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong He has won I put on the full armor of God Stand strong against the evil one I put on the full armor of God The full armor of God I put on the full armor of God Stand strong against the evil one I put on Hey guys, for the last two weeks we've been talking about suiting up. In the Bible, in a book called Ephesians, in chapter 6, the writer is a man named Paul and he talks about something called the armor of God. Armor is something that soldiers wear to protect them when they go into battle. And in the same way, God gives us special armor to wear so that we can be safe and so that we can do amazing things for Him. It's like a superhero suit that when we put it on, we have amazing strength to do things for God. The armor that God gives us is not made of physical things like clothes and material. It's made of spiritual things like truth and faith. Last week, we learned about the belt of truth. When you have the belt of truth buckled around your waist, in other words, when you know what the truth of God's word is, then you have lots of tools that you can use to know what to do and to make wise decisions, to live the way that God wants you to live. Today, we're going to be learning about the breastplate of godliness. So what does that mean? Well, we wear certain clothes when it's cold, like it's been this last week, right? So here's one of my favorites. This is the warmest, fluffiest gown that keeps me nice and warm, no matter how cold it is outside. So when it's really cold, we put on clothes to protect us and to keep us warm. So armor doesn't keep us warm, but it protects our bodies. This gown wouldn't help me a lot if I were a soldier going into battle. The breastplate of godliness is what God gives us to put on to keep us safe. Long ago, soldiers' armor and breastplates used to be made out of really heavy metal. Today, soldiers wear things like bulletproof vests to protect them. So what was the breastplate that God gives us made out of? Well, the Bible tells us that it's made out of godliness. Godliness is quite a big word. Another word we can use for it is to be holy. But what does that really mean? Well, to be godly or to be holy means to be set apart. Think of it like this. You have a toothbrush, right? I hope you have one. And you use your toothbrush for one specific thing, to brush your teeth. Would you want to use your toothbrush to clean the floor? Definitely not. What about cleaning the toilet? Would a toothbrush be good for that? Um, I don't think that would be a good idea. We keep our toothbrush for one special purpose just to brush our teeth and for nothing else. And in the same way, that's what it means to be holy, to be set apart for just one special thing. God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be set apart 
just to be used by Him. We are so special to God and He wants us to be used for His purposes. And so when we talk about holiness or godliness, it's about choosing to live God's way. If you are holy, it means that you are becoming more and more like Jesus. Only God is really holy, but we know that Jesus died on the cross for us so that all the bad things we do can be taken away and so that we can become more like Him. We can become more like Jesus by choosing to love Him, by obeying Him, by following Him. And so when you choose to do those things, it's like you're putting on your bulletproof vest of God's holiness and godliness to protect you. Let's watch this story about a man called Gideon and how he found courage, how he followed God and he had the strength to do what God was asking him to do. Not because he had it in himself, he was pretty scared, but because he trusted God and he got God's courage and strength. God's people, the Israelites, had disobeyed God. Because of that, God allowed their enemies, the Midianites, to come and take over their land. The Israelites were so scared of the Midianites that they even went and hid in caves. The Israelites needed help, so they prayed to God. God sent an angel to talk to a man named Gideon. Gideon was hiding in the caves too because he was also afraid of the Midianites. The angel greeted Gideon saying, Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Gideon knew how badly he and his people had been treated. He said to the angel, You say the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened? The angel said, you are strong, go and save Israel. Gideon didn't agree with what the angel was saying. How can I possibly save Israel? I'm not strong or important. But God promised to be with Gideon and to give him victory. Later that night, God spoke to Gideon and told him to tear down the altar that was built to one of the false gods named Baal and the pole that was built to worship the false god named Asherah. Gideon was supposed to build the right kind of altar where people could worship the one true God. Even though Gideon was scared, he believed that God would protect him and he could do the right thing. So Gideon waited until it was nighttime and then went out and did exactly what God told him to do. When everyone woke up the next morning, they could not believe their eyes. The altar to Baal was demolished and the pole was cut down. In its place was a new altar to worship God. God used Gideon to do great things and gave him the power he needed even when he was scared. Sometimes it can be scary to do what is right, but when we suit up with the armor of godliness, we don't have to rely on our own power. We have God's power to help in any circumstance. So the challenge for us this week is to remember to each and every day, put on the armor of God. First, put on the belt of truth, buckle it around your waist. In other words, choose to learn what God's truth is and to really live according to God's word and his truth. Do what it tells you to do. And then secondly, remember to put on your bulletproof vest of God's godliness. Try to be like Him, follow Him, obey Him, listen to Him, and don't trust in your own strength. You don't have to do it by yourself. You can do it with God's strength. When we trust God, it's like we're putting on a bulletproof vest that protects us and keeps us safe. So can you remember the memory verse from last week? Let's say it together. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Ephesians 6 verse 14. Well done. This week, our memory verse comes from 1 Peter 1 verse 16. And it's God saying to us, Be holy because I am holy. Let's say it again together. Be holy because I am holy. 1 Peter 1 verse 16. As we remember that verse and as we learn it this week, we can be reminded that God wants us to become like Him. And the more we become like Jesus, the more we are protected and safe in the world. So here's to a great week as you put on the armor of God, suit up and stand firm in all that God has called you to be and do. Will it superhero? Can a toy plane be a superhero? Let's find out.
Can a toy plane be a superhero? Yes! Can a toaster be a superhero? Let's find out. Can a toaster be a superhero? No! Can a banana be a superhero? Come back next week to find out.